Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Hackbyte, a brand new series here on Hack5 where I hope to teach you the basics of cybersecurity. I'm Nick, former co-host on the Nullbyte YouTube channel and cybersecurity researcher. On the first episode, we're going to learn how to take advantage of search engines and find almost anything on the internet using Google Dorks. Think of the Google search bar as a gateway to almost all information on the internet acting as the largest database of information that people have public access to. But all this information can make it difficult to find exactly what you want. And to return you more accurate results, Google makes assumptions about your search query. Google will alter your search results based on a number of factors, one being the popularity of a topic. For example, if you search Will Smith, Google will return you results about the popular actor, even if you wanted to learn about the baseball player with the same name. Google also takes into account your location where you're searching from, your search history, and even the device that you're searching on to optimize your results. This can be convenient for a quick off-the-cuff search, but can make finding something niche or having repeatable resu results more difficult. Today, we're gonna learn about proper use of a Google search, so you can refine your search and find that needle in the haystack. Potential discoveries include databases containing sensitive information that were not properly secured, contact information for individuals that can be sometimes hard to find otherwise, or can even allow you to find vulnerabilities in a web server. These advanced Google searches, sometimes referred to as Google dorks, simply take advantage of advanced Google search operators. For this tutorial, we'll start by learning simple techniques such as using quotation marks to only include exact matches, to some more advanced search queries so you can find leaked password lists and otherwise. Finally, I'll show you guys a neat little tool called Pagodo, which can work in the background, allowing you to maximize its effectiveness and perform more Google dorks. To follow this tutorial, all you'll need is a device which can use Google, which shouldn't be too difficult. However, if you do want to install Pagodo, you will need a computer with Python installed on it. So the first thing I'll go over is how to hone in onto a specific topic and kind of filter out all the noise that Google might throw at you if you're searching for a, a general term. So I'll go back to that Will Smith example that I brought up earlier and say I'm looking for statistics about the catcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Will Smith. So if I just search Will Smith, that's probably not going to uh, return what I want because by and large, people who are searching Will Smith are going to want to learn about the very famous actor who was on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and many, many other things. And like, this is the most you can really expect from Google. If you give it a search term like Will Smith, it's going to return results that are most likely to satisfy you. And most people are going to be searching for Will Smith, the actor. So if I wanted to filter out all this stuff that is related to Will Smith, the actor, which I do not want to learn about and find more about the baseball player. Well, the first thing I'll do is I'll put Will Smith in quotation marks because I only want exact results for Will Smith. I don't want anything that might just contain Will or just contain Smith. And then I'm going to, oh, as you can see, it's already recommending uh, the Dodger baseball player. But let's go take this a little bit further and make sure that nothing related to the actor is there. So I might do stuff like do attack for um, actor. So this basically is saying the minus actor is saying I don't want to include any results that have the keyword actor. And then I'll add another one for fresh prints. And I'm just putting fresh prints in quotation marks because it's two words. And so now if I search this, almost nothing related to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air will show up. And it's just going to give us stats about the far less popular baseball player. But this is just a simple example of how you can, um, uh, oh, this is actually the other Will Smith, the pitcher on the Braves. So if I instead wanted to find out about the Dodgers, then I would also include quotation Dodgers. So I learn about Will Smith, the catcher, who is right here. Yes. So this is the Will Smith I wanted to find. And as you can see, because Will Smith is such a common name that I had to do a lot of refinement to get exactly what I wanted. So the next example we'll go over something a little more advanced, but nothing too tricky is finding websites that could have some insecurities. So if you oftentimes vulnerabilities that you may run across, like you find this really cool exploit, like, wow, that seems really powerful if it was using the right hands. But most of the times with those exploits, there's a lot of caveats. They can only successfully attack web servers or devices with very, very specific vulnerabilities. And so one of those vulnerabilities is not having SSL set up on your web server. And so if you don't know, simply put SSL is that little lock pad in the top of your URL search term. And that just makes basically means that this browser starts with HTTPS and is created with SSL. So anybody on your local network can't sniff that traffic going to that SSL network. But if you want to find websites that don't have SSL enabled and are thus vulnerable to those kinds of attacks, then you can limit your results to only include sites that have HTTP instead of HTTPS. 
And so to do that, all you have to do is include the term in URL, HTTP. And then if you search that, oops, I forgot the colon. And so this isn't gonna work because it's just a generic search for HTTP inside URLs. But instead, if we limit it to a site with a specific domain, we'll get the results that we want. So let me go back to the main screen. And so if I wanna find media websites that, that don't have SSL enabled, I'll do site colon dot TV, and then in URL colon HTTP. And so now all of these websites are going to be TV websites that don't have SSL enabled. And as you can see, if I click any one of them, they're not gonna have that padlock in the top left and Google Chrome is actually telling me that this website's not secure. Please don't like log into it with a password that you care about or use your credit card to buy anything on this website because anyone on your network or further down the line would might be able to snoop in and steal that information. And techcrunch.tv, I don't think that's related to the actual TechCrunch. As you can see, a lot of these websites are a little bit sketchy and obviously because they don't have uh, SSL enabled. But you could do this for any URL. So I could do, if you're in a specific country and you want to find uh, websites that are vulnerable to this kind of attack, you can use your country's domain, like Norway is .no, .tv, while it's mostly used for uh, TV, uh, like television companies, media websites, it's actually the domain for Tuvalu, but that's a tiny country and there's not many websites hosted there. Yeah, so that's a simple way to find any websites that are vulnerable to, uh, that don't have SSL enabled. The last like simple Google dork I'll show you is actually pretty interesting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find any log files that are visible to the internet, but contain like some interesting information. So we're gonna limit it to only log files, which already might contain something interesting and only return log files that have the keyword password in it. So to do that, we're gonna do all in text, colon, and then password. And we're gonna wanna specify that we want to only show files that are log files, so we'll do file type uh, log, and we're gonna wanna limit our results to somewhat recent, so I'll do after 2018. And so all of these are going to be log files that contain the keyword password, and they're gonna be more recent than 2018. And so I can just click random one, and as you can see, this is probably something that shouldn't be exposed to the internet, and let me control F for password. Oh, okay, so this is just the log, but as you can see, so this one is just like logging like a computer log. So it's just checking that there's passwords. But if you go digging around here, I'm sure you could find um, a password leak that is exposed to the internet and probably shouldn't be. And the people who expose it to the internet probably aren't aware that it's there. Just an example of some of the Google search operators that you can use to do some Google dorks. But if you wanna learn more, this is a pretty neat uh, blog post that lists a bunch of um, other common search operators. So you can vent your own Google dorks and find anything that you wanna do. So if you don't wanna to have to memorize and understand how to utilize all those different advanced Google search operators and have to memorize all those different Google dorks, and also if you wanna cast a wider net, you can take advantage of some software to do this Google dorking for you. And there's a couple other tools out there, but this one is my favorite. It's called Pagoda, which stands for Passive Google Dork. And so basically uh, what it does in a nutshell is takes advantage of online repositories of thousands of different Google dorks and automatically sends them to Google and saves the results for you. And if you just uh, blindly sent all these kind of fishy search queries to Google, you know, every millisecond or so, Google is probably gonna block your IP address. But luckily, uh, Pagoda does some fancy smart stuff and it sends them at random time intervals and it can even send them through uh, proxies in order to avoid getting your IP blocked by Google. So on this tutorial, I'm just gonna really quickly show you how to install and how to set up Pagoda properly. I'll show you how to run a basic search and then I'll go over some results that I gathered using Pagoda a little bit earlier. So to install it, it's just like any other GitHub repository. I'm gonna copy this URL and open a terminal window in a directory of your choosing. I'm using it in my documents folder. And then to install it, we're just gonna clone it into this folder. It's gonna take a second or two, it's not that big. And then now if I type in LS, I can see that I have this new Pagoda folder here. So let's navigate into this Pagoda folder and let's see all the files that have come with it. And so we have this ghdb scraper.py uh, program, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. We have this main program for pagoda.py, which is actually gonna search the Google dorks. But before we can actually use these, we have to install everything in the requirements.txt file. And if you've ever used a Python program from GitHub before, you're probably familiar with how to install the requirements.txt, but if not, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is Python 3, because uh, Pagoda is a Python 3 tool, and then tack m pip install 
tag r requirements dot text and it's just going to take a couple seconds see what libraries that pagodo and ghdb scraper need it looks like some web scraping stuff and numpy but those are already installed for me and so now that that's taken care of we're going to go ahead and talk about what this ghdb scraper.py program does and it's important to use this one before you actually use pagodo.py and so what ghdb scraper does it checks the online repositories for google dorks and it downloads them and saves them to your computer so pagodo.py can actually use them um it's not necessary on a fresh install because as you can see we can go to this dorks folder and we can see that the dorks are already here so i'll cat a random one like error messages.txt just so you can see them as you can see it has some uh, google dorks to go down but in case if you've had pagodo installed for a while you want to make sure you have the most up-to-date dorks you're gonna to have to use ghdb scraper so i might as well show you how to use it really quickly so all you have to do is type python 3 and then the name of the program which is ghdb scraper github database scraper.py and tack i and what this is going to do is it's going to check all the dorks and it's going to see yeah so it's uh, downloading all the dorks from this category files containing passwords saving it to uh this file and so this is just something that you should remember to do if you've had pagodo installed for a couple months you come back to it and you install um you want to run another search just make sure you have the most up-to-date dorks and now that we have all our dorks ready we can actually go ahead and learn how to use pagodo so it's actually really simple all you have to do is make sure you're in the same folder as pagodo.py, which I am, and then I'll run an example search. So it's python.3 slash pagodo to tell Python to run pagodo.py. And then we're going to have to specify the domain. So if you're hired to do surveillance on a specific company or specific organization, you'd put their website or something like that. I'm just going to keep it uh, basic. I'll just put something like Amazon right now. I don't want anyone to take heat. And so this will only include results with the domain um, amazon.com. And then tack G, this is going to be specifying the .dorks file that we're going to use. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and open a new terminal window so we can take a look at all the different dork files that we have available. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the documents, uh, hack byte, pagodo. And then now if we go to this dorks folder where all the dorks are installed automatically. So we can see all of these um, different dorks files and the one we're gonna use depends on what we wanna find. So like, as you can see, they're pretty self-explanatory. So if you wanna find files that contain passwords, files that contain usernames, or files that contain juicy info, you'll use each respective dork to find that information. Um, there's pages that contain login portals, so you can like copy them for phishing, or you can see if they're exploitable, stuff like that. Vulnerable files and vulnerable servers, those are the kind of dorks that we went over at the end of the Google dorking tutorial a little bit, just a little bit ago. And then another interesting part of Pagodo is that even if you don't want to use this tool, all of these are good repositories for Google dorking that you can do manually. So if I just cat, let's just do files containing juicy info because that's the scan I ran with the results that I'll show you. And then these, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so it's a little easier to read. So these are Google dorks that you can use on your own to just find specific things. So if I want to find an RSA private key, I might use this Google dork with the domain that I want to specify. And so when I tell Pagodo to use this .dorks file, it's going to run through the list of all of these um, search queries, send it to Google and add on that tack D for Amazon that will specify that we only want results from Amazon. So that's what a .dorks file is. And let's go back to here. So we specified Amazon and we specified the domain we're going to want. We're going to specify dorks. So we're going to specify dorks, files, what was the name of it again? I want to make sure I get it right. It was files containing juicy info. So let's go ahead and specify that one. Containing juicy info dot dorks. The next thing you do is specify tag L and this will be an integer representing the maximum uh, results that you want to return. So for each line, you only want to return the first X number of results. To keep things shorter, you can keep it at a lower number, uh, like 50 or 20. By default, it's 100. Just for this tutorial, I'll leave it as 50. I'm not even gonna complete this whole search because they take forever. Then you can write tack S to save the results to an HTML file, which can be very uh, handy to review it later instead of just having it temporarily in the terminal window. So I always recommend including tack S. 
Attack E specifies the minimum delay in seconds. So this is the float, so it includes a decimal. So you can start with something low, like 10 or 15 seconds. But if you find that your IP is getting blocked, you might want to change it to something higher. The people who wrote Pagoda recommend that you use 35 seconds. So I'll specify 35.0 seconds. And then TAC J is um, something they, the people who wrote Pagoda called the jitter factor. And this adds some randomness to your searches. And basically what this number is, is it's a number that's multiplied by a random value to increase or decrease this delay. So the minimum delay will be 35 seconds plus some random value that Pagoda comes up with multiplied by this jitter factor. So it's not that too, not that important, but the important thing to note is that if your IP does get blocked when using Pagoda, then you might wanna increase this minimum value to make that less likely. And then that's it. That's all the arguments that we're gonna include. And then your Google dorking will start. And this will take a very, very long time because it's going to through um, 905 searches and then at, at minimum, it's gonna take 35 seconds between all of those searches, probably more. And if you want more results than 50, it's gonna take even longer than that. So this is definitely a tool that you have to plan around. This is something I totally recommend before you go to sleep, um, you know you're investigating something, so you're gonna run this search and then just leave it going in the background overnight. That's the easiest way to use the software <laughs> because otherwise you, you can't really do much after here. And so instead of waiting for all this time, I'm gonna go ahead and cut right now and I'm gonna show you some results that I got earlier by um, letting this program run overnight. So here I am in, uh, this is actually my main installation of Pagodo. That last one I was using was just for the demonstration purposes. And so I can see um, this is what your results will look like uh, by default when you save them. It's just pagoda underscore results and then these numbers. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually open this in Nautilus. So yeah, this is the text file that I'm interested in. And so this was after a long night of Google dorking. And then these are all the URLs that it found. And I think this was when I was doing files containing juicy info. And so I think it specified category, yeah. And so, yeah, so it shows you for each Google Dork. So if you go to line one, in text, Steam user passphrase. Yeah, so this is trying to find any websites that might contain some Steam information. So I can just click a random one and hopefully it doesn't take me anywhere sketchy. I'm on a virtual machine right now, so I'm not that scared. And then I'll open Chrome. Oops. Sorry, I can't copy and paste something. There we go. And so this is some, um, like it looks like some obscure forum website. And I'm sure it's in Spanish and I'm sure, yeah. And so this is a generic passphrase thing, but if you look through all of these, then I'm sure you'll be able to find something uh, interesting. So it's going to still take some work, but you're not gonna have to type in the Google Dorks automatically. And you're gonna have a nice convenient list of URLs to be able to check. And so yeah, that's the basics of using Pagodo. It's actually a really simple program. And that's most of the functionality you'll get. It's just the more advanced you can get is adding your own Google Dorks to those .dorks files, which is really easy, and just making sure that, and then targeting the domain that you want to target. You can also throw it, you don't have to specify a domain. I should have mentioned that earlier, that tac D doesn't, is actually an optional parameter. So you can just throw it at the internet and you get all the results from it. And so yeah, that's the basics of Pagodo and the basics of Google Dorking. Hopefully the techniques that I showed you here can improve your internet sleuthing abilities allowing you to avoid those frustrating moments where you know there's something there, but you just can't find it. If you liked this tutorial, be sure to check out the Redia YouTube channel. And if you have any ideas for a future video, you can hit me up on Twitter at Nick Gottschall. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.